if you guys watch my pickup videos, you guys know I pick up a lot of VHSs, and some of them VHSs tend to be, well, for a younger audience, like elementary schoolers or preschoolers. But I realized I never really explained why I like those shows, and I never really talked about what shows were my favorite. So this video is going to be my five favorite Nick Jr. shows from the 90s. Now there's a couple rules I have for this list. One, it had to either debut in the 90s or it had to have a good portion of its runtime through the 90s. For example, Reading Rainbow aired in I believe 87 and went to 2004. That type of show would be perfectly fine on this list. Also, if the show even aired Let's say December 31st, 1999, it technically debuted in the 90s. I totally count it. So with that being said, I do want to dedicate this video to a very close friend that we all lost and we never really got to say goodbye to. That would be, well, Face. Now Face was like the lifeblood of Nick Jr. He was basically the host of Nick Jr. throughout the 90s and the early 2000s. Like... He was goofy, he made goofy jokes, and he just introduced us to all these shows, and it just made Nick Jr. that much more fun, because no one really had that. So, like I said, I, I just want to dedicate this video to Face. Buddy, this one's for you. Coming in at number 5, we have the Muppet Babies. So imagine the Muppets mixed with the Rugrats. Uh, instead of having Tommy, you had Kermit as a baby. And you also had Miss Piggy. You had the whole Muppet gang. They were in like a daycare is the best way to really describe it. And it's just them like going on adventures. Like I said, it's basically the Rugrats just with Muppet characters. And I think it worked really, really well. For one, it wasn't actually puppets. It was actually cartoon, which was... I think made it work that much more. I believe it was if it was like puppets, it really wouldn't work out. Plus, they'd be very, very limited. So, with that being said, the animation is actually really, really good. Uh, it's definitely up there with some of the better animation of that time period, in my opinion. Um, I just remember it being a really fun show. Uh, like I said, it was like the Rugrats, just with Muppets. And there's one episode that really just sticks out in my mind. That's where they were like dreaming. And Kermit is on like a lily pad and a submarine pops up and for some reason the army dude wants Kermit to be a torpedo. For some reason, I don't know, it was just kind of goofy but it was fun. If I can find that episode, I'll leave it linked down below. Actually, I'm going to leave an episode for each one on this list linked down below in case you want to go ahead and check it out. Coming in at number 4 is Blue's Clues. Now, I was about 5 when Blue's Clues actually aired, and I was I was maybe a little bit above its demographic, so I was made it, made it seem like I didn't like the show, but secretly, I loved it. Uh, I thought it was fun. It was a very unique show because, well, it wasn't cartoon, but it wasn't live action. It was actually a mix of both. So you had Steve, who was later replaced by Joe. Why? I mean, I know now why, but back then it was like, really? You're gonna get rid of, you're gonna get rid of Steve for Joe? Come on, man. Like, why? But then, like I said, we later found out why. Um, because Steve went to college. Sure. Sure. But you had Steve in this cartoon world where everything was animated. Everything had its own life, basically. So you had, like, the side table. Of course, you had Blue, which was Steve's pet dog who would go around and leave clues on things that Blue wanted to either do or give as a present. And it was a really fun show because it allowed kids to like think and use context clues and just clues in general to help solve a problem, which I think is actually really cool. It was a really unique take on you know, helping kids with problem solving. Also, you can't forget Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper, they even had a little baby called Paprika, like how adorable is that? Also, Mailbox, how could you forget Mailbox? And the song for Mailbox to basically summon them is the best way to put it, which I still know. I'm not going to do it here, but I will insert a clip. Mail time. Mail time. The mail's here. Come on. Bye, guys. 
Here's the mail, it never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. Which, that was also a really fun part about that show. When Steve would get a letter, he would open it up and it would cut to either a group of kids or a couple kids just doing unique things. And I remember one of them being, I believe they made like paper or something out of like recycled materials, which was really, really cool. Coming in at number three is Franklin. Franklin, my boy. Uh, it's a cartoon, it's about a turtle named Franklin, and he has a friend named Bear, it's like his best friend. And it's just Franklin just being a kid, getting into trouble, uh, getting into situations, and just... The whole show is just like, hey, it's okay to get in trouble every once in a while, you just gotta learn from your mistakes. Uh, for one, the animation, again, is top notch. You, like, a lot of these shows have really great animation. Like, there's some shows from the 90s, for example, Caillou. Although it's good, it's very simple, the background is just like a little colored section surrounded by white even though it's not bad you have shows like franklin that the whole world is just animated and it's nice like it, it's nice to see that amount of detail going to a kid's show because they could have easily just made it super simple but if they would have done that it would have been as enjoyable but franklin i remember just being a really good show now i used to watch a lot of these shows when i would go to like the doctors because they would always have like Nick Jr. on just on the TV or I used to have a lot of ear problems so when I would go to this hospital uh, for certain like doctor's appointments and hearing checks and stuff like that they would always have Nick Jr. on like in the waiting room and that's how I watched a lot of these shows when I wasn't either like sick or like during the summer or something when I wasn't in school and Franklin is just one of the shows I really just gravitated towards and I just really, really enjoyed. Coming in at number two is Little Bear. I absolutely adore Little Bear. It's honestly a show I still watch every once in a while because it's super relaxing and I know what you're thinking. Bro, you're like 30. Why are you watching Nick Jr. shows? First off, I'm 27, three months and 28 days years old. So back off, I'm not 30 yet. But even if I was 30, I'd still probably watch it because it's just a really relaxing show. Uh, for one, the animation is great, but the music is just calming and relaxing. And it's just about Little Bear who wears no clothes, which is kind of weird because his parents do. I, I don't know. I, I never got that. But it's about him and... or her? Is it a him or is it a her? Pretty sure it's a him. But it was about Little Bear and his friends going on adventures and just using their imagination to just have fun. Like I said, it's super relaxing. Like, when I watch it, it's normally because I can't fall asleep. And just, like, the music and the calmness. Just, th does that mean I'm, like, a little kid still? I don't know. That's weird. But it's a great show. So I'll leave an episode linked down below as well. Coming in at number one is Gullah Gullah Island. Believe it or not, this is the show that made me want to find more 90s stuff back when I was in high school. Um, I was always into like old Nickelodeon cartoons and TV shows. I was like, oh, those are always better. But I didn't really like go searching for them. But one day I was staying at my friend's house when I was in high school and we were just talking about old shows and I brought up Gala Gala Island and we just started talking about it. And we're like, man, I wonder if it's still on because we both really enjoyed it. So what did we do? Like typical 16 or 17 year olds, we actually went to his cable box and just searched Gullah Gullah Island. And sure enough, it was, well, we were still on, but it was on at 4.30 in the morning. So what did we do? We stayed up till 4.30 in the morning just to watch an episode of Gullah Gullah Island. And after doing that, I was like, man, I want to find more shows that I used to watch when I was younger, or I want to find more things I used to have when I was younger. And that's what really started my whole 90s craze. Like I said, I was always really into, well, the 90s, like cartoons and stuff. But this is the show that really just pushed me. Now, the show is actually about a family. Uh, I believe it's the Days family is how you pronounce it. Uh, they live on Gullah Gullah Island, which is based off of an actual, like, island chain. And they also have a pet or a friend. I wouldn't really say a pet. It's more of a friend named Binya Binya who is a tall yellow frog named Binya Binya, obviously. It was just a typical show from that era 
that help kids like solve things and figure things out and realize it's okay to be different. And I remember one episode where there was like a really bad thunderstorm and they taught the kids to count the seconds between each like lightning crash and you could actually tell if the storm was moving away or not which I was like that's not true then I looked it up and it's actually kind of true so that was actually really really awesome to find find that episode of course can be linked down below but that's my five favorite Nick Jr. shows of all time in the comments down below let me know what yours were and if you enjoyed this video let me know by smashing that like button I also plan on doing a couple more of these, one with PBS and one with Disney, so if you want to see those, stay tuned, they'll be out relatively soon. But, with that being said, you guys rock, stay rad, see you guys next time, peace.